on the other end of the orange couch, we have the also lovely and beautiful Jesse Wren. Yes. And hey a little mysterious, right? I feel like you're uh, mysterious. I am mysterious, yeah. Most definitely my more vibe. mysterious than most of the girls that we have on here because I haven't actually seen her get down. I didn't know she got down. I didn't know she ate pussy. I didn't know anything about her. Really? I just yeah. knew that she was really hot and well, I like following her on Instagram. My vibe is like innocent until like proven guilty. So like I like to like act really innocent and then you know, when like the doors close, I like to be a little because there is like this whole genre of girls on Instagram who just like make like really cute Instagram safe videos mm -hmm. and then you subscribe to their OnlyFans and they're showing like nothing. Right. Like they're you know? showing. So I, I just kind of had that like idea about you because you no. have a really big following. So I feel like a lot of the girls like that, they're like, oh, I don't have to do anything. Like I'm already popular. No, um, definitely not me. I definitely didn't start off popular. Like, you know, I've been I have content for like four years. Like so you've I've been, been shooting. shooting that long yeah i've been shooting that long and i've shot it boy girl since the beginning you know okay so you didn't start with just like cute photos no i never started with cute photos like okay. i always i went all in like wow okay I, I respect that yeah i love it you know i love being sexy in front of the camera it's like before only fans started i was already set i was already like taking pictures and videos for my my men you know you're a one guy type of girl or what, what what's your perspective mm. on that okay well i do like to like date i love dating and i like you know changing up the roster every so often but you get bored i am pretty monogamous like when i am with someone mm -hmm. i only like to be with that person but then i get bored and i get tired so i, I do switch it up what's your longest relationship oh my god six months really <laughs> So are the the guys that date you, are they like, oh my God, my, my time is running out. Like I have to enjoy this as much as possible. I let them know. You I do. let them know. What do you, you have say? A time limit. I let them know that they're expired, that their free trial has expired, you know? <laughs> I feel like after like six months, like we're either getting married or we're never going to be together again. Wow. So you're still waiting for the guy where it's going to turn into marriage as yes, opposed to I, just a brutal breakup. I do get married. You do? Yeah. How old are you right now? 25. Okay. You live in Miami? Yeah. When I think about Miami... I feel like you are the type of girl that I see when I go to the club in Miami that helps fulfill the stereotype of Miami, which is like, it's all hot ass chicks everywhere you look, fat fucking asses and tits in your face everywhere you go. I don't know. I just feel like you, you seem like a very Miami type of girl. Thank me. you. I was actually... <laughs> <laughs> she didn't skip a beat. <laughs> I was actually born in Cuba and I left when I was six and I've been living in Miami my whole life. So I am a Miami girl. Mm. And my friends tell me all the time, I'm like, they're like, Miami, you can never leave Miami. You are Miami. <laughs> Really? I was like, how do you like being here? She's like, fucking hate it. I fucking hate it. Really? Why? What's LA not got that Miami does? I don't go out here like to the clubs or nothing. Like it's just kind of boring for me. It LA is work for me. Like if I come here, it's like to meet somebody and work with them. It's not really to like enjoy myself. The only thing I enjoy about LA is the food. Really? Really good food. But okay, what you're you stay in the clubs in Miami? I don't stay there, but like I do go like maybe like every other week I'll go to the club. But I'll go to dinner, like I'll go on a date and dinner every week. I do feel like they have better nightlife than us. Do you not agree? We don't even talk about the nightlife in LA. Like, well, I heard that you got, your clubs close like at two in the morning. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. the time we Everything go here. to the club. And they yeah. start like shutting down the bar at like one thirty. Wait, but the so, cl the clubs only open till like what, like four? I think so. in Miami, no, like. It doesn't close. It doesn't close. And that goes for bars and everything as well, or it's just clubs get to stay up. It's late? clubs. It's clubs, especially like the strip clubs. Most strip clubs are twenty four hours. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and that's what we do in Miami. We go to strip clubs. So you go to eleven after the regular club. You go to dinner. You go to the club, and then you go to the strip club. Okay. So it is nice to keep having somewhere to go. The fact that we're like, oh, fuck, it's 1.30. What are we going to do like, next? Like, go home and Sucks. sleep. But it's like an elitist thing where you have to know who has like a dope yes. house party yes. after hours type thing. If but you have you ever out. been to a fun after hours in L.A.? I mean, I used it's to do coke, like, so but it's everything was fun. just sitting around doing coke. It's not fun. It was fun back then. I mean, I thought <laughs> it was fun. It's not really. Like, the strip club in Miami at 3 in the morning is way more fun. Mm. Yeah. I can see it. Wait, so, okay, Cuba. You don't have any memories of Cuba or anything? Yeah, for sure. It was, like, really rough yeah. in Cuba. But my mom won the lottery, and we came Literally? to the United States. She like, won the lottery? Yeah, she won. The, in Cuba? Yeah. So the Cuban lottery is that you get your visa, and you get to come to the United States on an airplane, whereas most, most Cubans come to the United States 
crossing borders or through a boat. Right. But because we won the lottery, we came on an airplane. Wait, but so like she bought a lottery ticket or yes. this is a metaphor? No, it's Wait. it's the Cuban lottery. So system. you play the lottery in Cuba and if you win, you, you get to just no leave. There's no money. <laughs> there's no money. There's just a visa. But do you still what? just buy your lottery ticket at the gas station or is it like you're going to the government to buy a lottery ticket? I was it? six. Okay. okay. I don't know. I'm just like very curious. <laughs> I am going to Google Cuban lottery. It's absolutely not in effect anymore because oh. of... The things have changed since Obama. Like you know, we can't we can't just arrive to the United States and become residents or citizens. That's kind of what I was thinking too. Is that that's not really like a prize for most people because for most people, it's like if you got to go to America, it's like you still wouldn't really have any money or, or a place to stay or anything, right? Seems like it would be hard. Yeah, you have to have your family here. Okay. You have to. Have and you family. had family here. Yes, I had came. family. Okay, cool. But I was also when I first came here. Um, there's like an asylum program that, that we got put into as like refugees and we were like living me and my mom were living off of motels mm. like every week we they gave us a new motel to live in and it was rough oh my god that was scary and it was just you and your mom you guys didn't have any siblings no i don't have any siblings oh wow no, and no, no, were no. you always hot when did you figure out you were hot i've always been hot like i've always been it but i think i figured it out you love her? when <laughs> i was 18 when I was 18, I was like, wait a minute. I have so many options, so many opportunities, so many choices that now I could do whatever I want. But before that, I was like school. I was a nerd. I was gifted. I was reading books. I was I went to college or university. I That's studied, school, guys. Okay, I studied cool. math. <laughs> I studied like engineering. But then I was like, no, I'm hot. I don't have to do any of this. And I just like started living my life, you know, and and meeting people who I wanted to be like, and then I just got into the industry. So do you like, relate yeah. to the phrase, your pussy is your passport? Well, <laughs> it's funny because to come here, like I was like doing the arrangements of like the airplane and the, and the hotels and stuff. And I was like asking for help because I'm like, I've never bought an airplane ticket and I've never bought a hotel. Not because I don't travel, but because I don't have to, you know? So, <laughs> so someone's always done it for you. <laughs> yes. Because, okay, after living in L.A. for a couple of years, I started to realize that there's this thing where a lot of the hottest girls, the most naturally beautiful girls, have no idea how to live. They have no idea how to do even the most basic tasks. And a lot of them have never really even developed like a personality or an ability to like get along with people. Because if you're hot enough... There's just a line of dudes who want to do everything possible for you. Has I that? I feel like that's more true in LA than anywhere else because LA girls like are very spoiled. You know, really. I don't know it's that. Better many, if you grow up a little ugly and you yeah, grow some character, yeah, and you learn how to do shit for yourself. I feel like and that's why I love hot. you so much. Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. were you bullied for? I wasn't bullied, but I was like not cute. I was very overweight, okay. nerdy, but like. I had friends, but like, you know, I when just I wasn't hot. When I met her hot. in 2016, she was very much like just starting to get used to the idea of people thinking she was hot. Like it was very new to her, which yeah. at like 25 was pretty like out of the ordinary, you know? 